Well, we want to welcome Randy McCharles, author of the upcoming Connecticut Gumshoe in King Arthur's Court. Um, welcome, Randy. Great to be here, Rhea. Thank you. Um, you also have another title with us, uh, Much Ado About Macbeth, which you've had with us for a few years now, but this one, actually, this one will be out by the time this recording comes out. Uh, December 15th is the release date. Yeah, and this will go out shortly before the new year. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and life in general. Life in general. Well, uh, <laughs> currently I'm a hermit because of the pandemic. Who is it? But how are you dealing with it? I know some people, like I love, I'm fine with it. I love it. I'll just sit and read or play games. But Well, well here's the thing is uh, six years ago now I uh, faced an early retirement from work uh, at which time I started writing full-time so I've been at home writing for the last six years uh, so having to stay home and write isn't a big change <laughs> um, I, I uh, have had to cut back on a lot of social activities um, of course like everyone else has Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, mentally, mental health wise, I'm just fine. And lifestyle wise, it's not a whole lot different. So, uh, so I'm doing good. How about you? Well, I'm doing good. I worked from home long before it was cool anyway. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I'm happy. We had to cut down. We used to um, do tabletop gaming every weekend, as you know. As um, I know, yeah. Background <laughs> for those first time listeners randy and i have known each other for 15 years at least 20? yeah yeah a long time. long time um yeah so but and we would board game every weekend but obviously well, that's you, not you would board game every weekend yeah, you would uh, occasionally when you got there yeah, we, we, we shot for once a month we didn't quite hit that target <laughs> no no it was for the last little while it was more like once or twice a year well, that's because we were away a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, I The last couple of years, I've been spending a lot of time in British Columbia at my parents' house. But, um, yeah, so so obviously we don't do that. But, you know. Well, I'm, you and John do some gaming, don't you? We do, but not as much as when we have people over. To be no. honest, we find other things to do because we're big computer gamers. Yes. And we're big readers, and we're, you know, we find other things that also fill the time, so. Yeah. And how about you? Besides writing, how do you fill your time? Uh, well, uh, we've been um, watching television. So uh, uh, back in June, I pulled the plug on our cable. Um, and uh, we started watching uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. And so we've got the whole wide world of Amazon Prime viewing. So we've been uh, spending our evenings pretty much uh, just uh, seeing what's there and watching something. Have you been doing the Netflix too, or did you get rid of that one? Oh, we never, we've never had Netflix. Uh, oh. uh, my family has it in BC. So when we're in BC, we watch Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you don't catch the what's trending like the Queen's Gambit and all those other ones then? No, but uh, if we make it out there this winter, which is what we're planning on doing, we can watch it then. That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm in no hurry. Um, <laughs> like I say, it's, it's not going away. No. It's all out there forever somewhere. Well, yeah, I'm not sure about Amazon. We have Amazon, but we don't watch it as much. But Netflix will rotate their stock, as it were. I'm oh, yeah, but it'll move and it'll come back. Yes. Yes. I know we've been caught a few times. This series is going to end in a week, and we're like, what? We're only halfway through. Uh-oh. <laughs> so. Um, so that's it, writing in Netflix, or Amazon? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, like, like you said, my last book with uh, Taiki was, uh, uh, I don't know, three, four years ago. Um, I've been busy writing a... Uh, a, a non-speculative crime series. Oh yeah. As well, so I've actually had five novels out in that series. 
uh, since much ado about McMath, but I'm eager to get back into some speculative work with, uh, with Tyke because it's still dear and dear to my heart. <laughs> I also know you're lying about what else you're not doing because when words collide is still happening. <laughs> oh, I'm still working on that. Yes, yeah. uh, I've been oh, uh, working so on see? that for ten years. You were uh, so that hasn't changed except it was online this summer. This summer, yeah, but not everyone knows that you do that and what that is. So, yeah, so it's uh, I have always been involved in volunteering for literary events. Yeah, me too. I think that's where uh, we yeah, met. Yeah, yeah, that's where we met actually. <laughs> yeah, when was I was a, chairman of one year. Yes. And so uh, uh, you and I both worked on, uh, on the Calgary's uh, Speculative Fiction Convention for years. And then when it ended, uh, uh, we started a multi-genre literary event yeah. uh, that you also worked on. Yes. And, uh, and I've been, that's, that's kind of my day job, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I've been there. I was... Although it's funny that when you're not there for a few years, I was talking to, um, I'm interviewing um, someone else for the science fiction anthology. I'm interviewing later this week and she goes, yeah, I've been going to When Words Collide since the beginning. And I'm like, I'm one of the founding members. We probably know each other. And she goes, maybe. <laughs> like nobody wow. remembers me. You leave for three years and that's it. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, um, they probably remember you by sight though. A lot of people, it's a lot like that at yes. conventions anyways, but I do get that even from when I was in conver conversion, I was like two years after I had dropped, I stopped, people are going, I was like, okay, I'll volunteer and do this. And I've had someone go, who are you? And I'm like, I was yes. chairman three years ago. Don't give me that baloney. <laughs> I'm very forgettable. <laughs> Well, you, you know, I, I'm horrible with names, so. Uh, well, it's not just names, looks. People tend to forget. I'm forgettable. It's not like you and Cliff that everyone knows. Well, that's why I try to look like a homeless person. People remember me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you've got the bush thing going, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> but, um, okay, so let us, I said this was going to be casual, and we've sort of discussed every topic in a quarter, in like five minute period, which, so tell us about Connecticut Gumshoe um, and, and the um, chapter headings, which I found interesting. Um, so I, I'm gonna start with uh, kind of why I wrote it. Um, the whole idea that Mark Twain had of sending a Connecticut Yankee to King Arthur's court mm -hmm was freaking brilliant yes um but you know the, the books from the 1800s mm -hmm. and the writing style is so archaic i couldn't actually read the book but i am a huge bing crosby fan yes and that was a good movie i saw that and, well i didn't enjoy the movie yeah. you didn't I, I i watched the movie and it was kind of my least favorite bing film <laughs> um and um I think the reason why is because the uh, the whole book was written as a social commentary. Um, Mark Twain was a humorist, but he was actually very much uh, uh, a commentator on, on society. Yes. And so uh, he was trying to be too serious with his humor <laughs> for me. Um, but I really, really, really loved the idea. So I thought, you know, it makes... It, it's been a couple hundred years. Maybe it's time to revisit this whole idea. And I thought uh, I should send somebody from today back to King Arthur's court. Only who should it be? And uh, I very quickly came up with a private detective. What would a private detective do in Camelot? Yes. And of course, Gumshoe is just the perfect person instead of Yankee. Uh, Connecticut Gumshoe. So I thought, you know, I'm going to send. Uh, I'm going to send a private eye to, to, uh, to Camelot, but what kind of private eye should I send? And uh, I thought, well, you know, um, why not a hard-boiled detective? <laughs> well, if you're going to use the word gumshoe, I mean, what else would well, you Well, yeah, use? gumshoe kind of implied that too. Yes. And so then I thought of, well, why not, you know, uh, mash up 
a, a well-known uh, private detective story. So I kind of picked the Maltese Falcon because I was kind of looking at a Connecticut gumshoe in King Arthur's court. Let's mash it up with the Maltese Falcon and uh, kind of reenact the plot only in the only medieval times. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought that'd be a lot of fun to write, and it certainly was. So I, <laughs> I went and wrote that like mad, and went, oh, I'm just enjoying this immensely. And then I was done, and it was too short. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. Yeah, I'm going, okay, I've written this, and uh, it's too short. It's not a novel length. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do a sequel. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and because the first half of the book was about the Maltese Falcon, maybe the second half should be more about Arthurian things. Yes. And so uh, I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun it, because it's a time travel story if uh, the timelines weren't in sync. So I have uh, my gumshoe return to Camelot six months later, his time, but six years later. Mm -hmm. time. And so uh, that allowed me to have a whole bunch of fun with the characters who are now six years older. Um, and then I kind of play with some of the common tropes of, uh, of Camelot, you know, uh, uh, the Holy Grail, yes. uh, Merlin being trapped in a cave, um, uh, uh, with um, the the uh, the countryside dying as the king dies, uh, those common tropes I got to have a lot of fun with in the second half of the book. And so I kind of wrote that. Now I had a full length novel, <laughs> and uh, and I was quite happy with it. So uh, I'm hoping readers will also be happy with it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to write. Uh, it's an updated version of the original Connecticut Yankee. Um, it's got some social commentary in it, but it isn't the deep, heavy social commentary <laughs> of the original book. That's not uncommon, the social commentary, to even um, subconsciously I put it in books. You'll find it in books where I don't know mm -hmm. if the authors intended it. Well, I, I intend it. Um, yes. My, my philosophy about writing is that... Uh, is that stories should be character driven for today's audience. And um, you get to actually look at the world and yourself uh, through the eyes and actions of, of your character. And so you do want to uh, uh, bring in uh, things that affect you in a distance remote setting uh, where you don't have to take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, and you know, that's been done since Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels, right? It's, it's uh, yes. a common method of storytelling. And I, and I firmly buy into that. Uh, you want to take a look at some very, very serious things uh, that are actually hard to look at, uh, but distance it to the point where you can say, oh, I didn't realize what I just read. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, so we should mention, because you say, he, even in the write-up, he's sort of a Sam Spade type character. Yeah. How modern so, is your story? So he, here's what I wanted to do. Uh, it's contemporary. So our gumshoe could be living in 2020, except there's no pandemic. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make him an anti-Sam Spade. I wanted him to feel and come across like Sam Spade, um, where he's actually very much the opposite. If you set them down at a, at a table to talk, they really wouldn't have that much in common. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, I'm trying to get that. He, he, he's a down on his luck character. In fact, the story starts, he's about to die uh, in the opening scene, uh, just because he's bad luck. I mean, uh, he just has not had any success in his life. But he is, is not the womanizer that Sam Spade is. In fact, he totally fails at relationships. Um, he drinks, but he's not a hard drinker uh, like Sam Spade. He is a heavy smoker. 
um, but he's trying to quit. Uh, you know, Sam Spade would not try to quit smoking. Yeah, uh, but, but that but, was of his time too. Oh yes, yeah. but again, uh, who is the character, right? Uh, That's this right. is a character uh, who idolizes Humphrey Bogart and so started, started smoking as a teenager. Uh, then learned that uh, Bogart died of esophageal cancer <laughs> and has been trying to quit for years and can't quit. Yeah. Uh, so he's, I want him to feel as much like Sam Speed as possible, but when you actually look at him, go, this isn't Sam Speed at all. And in let's... fact, he actually, he actually has fun uh, because he's in Camelot. Well, this is a time travel thing. Yeah. Uh, someone asked him his name and he's about to give his name and his name is Sam Sparrow. And he goes, I'm going to have fun here. And he calls himself Sam Spade. So now he's known throughout in Camelot for the entire novel as Sam Spade. And he starts feeling guilty about it. <laughs> he goes, oh man, you know, I lied. How do I tell the truth now without coming across like an idiot? <laughs> so yeah, uh, you know, I, have, I had a lot of fun, a lot of fun writing this book. And it shows in some of your, um, your titles. I mean, you have... The Maltese Falcon is a title, but you also have like the Maltese Chicken, and um... <laughs> so uh, I, I I write the scenes rather than chapters. So there's like fifty scenes in the book. Um, 50, um, and I, fifty-seven. Fifty-seven, uh, and I title them. Yes. Um, I I see the title as important as the entire scene, as the title sets you up. For what you're going to get and so I try to have the title uh, be closely tied to actually the contents of the scene and often it's an actually a, a phrase from the scene somewhere um, and it kind of just set it kind of sets the atmosphere what am I going to read you know what am I going to read about in this scene hopefully it's a hook well I like this title I want to read the scene <laughs> some of them I, I found it fun like an unusual bird for a pirate was a fun name and yeah because it wasn't a parrot <laughs> no no yeah no you used the um colloquial old-timey sam spade version of bird yeah yeah so i i i and, and actually when i get beta readers uh, i do ask them to uh to give me their reader response on the titles uh on the scenes to make sure that i haven't uh um, you know, gone over everybody's heads or missed the mark or whatever. Yes. So I, so I do ask about that. Yeah, because some of them are really fun, like like that. I'm not going to go into all of them, obviously, because you know it, it's hard to, to talk. Them. It's hard to talk about a book without giving stuff away. That's always always my hardest thing is, is what can I say here that's not going to kind of ruin the experience reading it. I know. And I, I, when I set up these interviews, I waffled back and forth on whether or not to have people, the authors read like the first chapter or something. And then I decided against it um, for no reason. Then it's just, then it's a reading. It's not an interview. Yeah. And there, there will, there will be other uh, clips of me reading from the book online as well coming up. So and make sure you give them to us and we'll put them on the YouTube channel too. Oh, that's where they're going. If they're going to, uh, to Taiki. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> then you will send them to me. Cause I yes, I will. Margaret, yeah. like she would send them on to me, but she never puts anything on the YouTube channel. It usually falls to me. But the, the nice thing about just having a standalone little reading clip is people can decide uh, whether they want to hear it or not. That's true. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, stand alone. Because I know if I'm anticipating a, a book and I've already decided I want to read it, I don't need to hear the teaser reading because that might actually give, a, give some of it away for me. Uh, but if I don't know about the book, then I go, hey, maybe I want to listen to the teaser reading to see if it interests me or not. No, that's true. Um, yeah. I was going to say something and then I lost it because that's how <laughs> my brain works. You know, we're both getting older. Oh, yes. I find I lose things way more often now than I used to. I lose thoughts more often, which I suppose could be scary, but I don't think it's that way. I just, but um, yeah. 
So how are you dealing? Are are you going to deal with Christmas? Are you um, I don't know. We're we're going to jump all over the place in this interview. Uh, just live with it. <laughs> well, uh, we're we're planning on driving out to Vancouver Island. Um, the last couple of years, we've been going out for part of the winter and part of the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, this summer, we skipped. Uh, we didn't. Yeah, I out. wonder why. Well, you know, it's 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 tourist season. <laughs> <laughs> and I figured uh, it's uh, that uh, fewer tourists on the road would probably be a good idea in the summer. Uh, for the winter, uh, my brother and sister-in-law are, in theory, still going to Mexico for, uh, really? for a month. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, well, you know, the tourist areas are be are being very cautious. And they they aren't doing badly at all in the tourist areas. Yeah, you still have to fly though. Yeah, uh, that's for me. That's the big question. I really would have to go. Is it worth flying or not? Yeah. Um, and I haven't really gotten the straight scoop on flight safety. I haven't looked for it, uh, but I sure haven't seen any uh, official statements on it. Um, so who knows? But in theory, yeah. uh, they're going, and uh, and then I will be out there uh, uh, making sure if my parents need anything, they can get it. Um, and I'll be house sitting for uh, for my brother and sister in law. So we're still planning on going. We have to see if uh, travel is going to get restricted or not <laughs> as Christmas approaches. <laughs> so. I know the in the states with the, through the magic of things. This is being recorded around the U.S. Thanksgiving. Yes, not going out till around Canadian till Canadian till Christmas, but so about a month early. We're recording this. Um, yeah, and I know they're begging people don't do Thanksgiving in the states, and nobody's listening. No, no, and of course we saw a spike in Canada from Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes, we definitely here in Alberta, we're going through a pretty major spike right now. Yeah, so like I said, we do, don't know what's going to happen, but right now we're, we're, we're still planning on it. Uh, when we make the trip, we do a road trip. We, uh, we typically just grab some McDonald's on the on route. We don't go to a sit-in restaurant or anything. And so essentially we'll be in the car the entire trip. Yeah, so it's a little safer than yeah. flying. But. I, and on the ferries, I don't know if they're going to let people stay in the car on the ferries or not. If they do, we're just going to stay in the car. And then uh, we've actually got the, uh, any, an apartment unit to self-isolated when we get there. Okay. It's just us. So we can actually get there for a few days, you know, for 10 days before we see any family members, if that's what we need to do. Well, that's good. But we're, we're ready for it. Good. Good. Then I don't have to be speechifying. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, uh, we're, they're in Parksville. And Parksville is pretty much a, a clean town. They've had uh, uh, one positive by an American tourist in Parksville. And otherwise, it's been a clean city. So it's a tiny town. It's been a clean town. Yeah, I think overall the island is better than mainland. Oh, Vancouver yes. Anyways, because um, my husband, John and I both have um, family on the island and they're, they're doing okay, I and, guess. And, and their cases are in Victoria, Nanaimo, Colbax, yeah. so the larger population centers. Yeah, we have one in Victoria and one in Boondocks, so <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Because then I'll get it. If she hears this, then she'll go, Shonagan Lake is not a boondock. Ooh, sounds great. Yeah. I, you know, this is something I like about the island is there's these villages everywhere. Exactly. And it's like, you know, there's one to 300 people in a village. You know, I, I love that. Because they're, they're not far away. It's not like they're all isolated. Uh, there's, you know, every, uh, every 10 kilometers down the road, there's another village. So, so I, I really like that, uh, that lifestyle. Yeah, I don't. I know we've, we've been out there visiting several times. And once um, 
my mom dragged us to every little village antique store and pawn shop. I was like, oh God, not another one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I'm a city girl. Um, and also a weird quirk. John's been out more than me because he spent um, a month out last year because his dad got hurt. But oh. I have never been to the island where there's been more than one day in a row of sunshine. Oh, yes. You need to, uh, uh, you need, like, well, we're there in the winter, right? Yeah. Uh, in the winter, it is like six to eight degrees. Celsius. Yeah, Celsius. <laughs> and it's overcast. Uh, and if it's not raining, it's about to rain. That's winter. I've only uh, gone in it, spring and summer, and it's the same way. Well, no, when we go there in, in July, mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's sunny most of the time for us. That's what people yeah. tell me. Like when yeah. John was there for a month, it was fine. He had sun, but that's everyone tells me. You know, oh, we just had a big heat wave. But whenever I'm there, <laughs> I missed it. Well, Remind me not to go out there when you're there. <laughs> exactly. My goodness. Uh, you know, we're, we are ready for the, uh, the dark overcast winter because that's what you get. Yes. Uh, that is the trade-off. Is, is you're rarely going to have any snow, uh, but you're rarely going to have any blue sky either. <laughs> get snow sometimes. I know where mom is, um, Shawnigan Lake. Like, mind you, BC's idea of snow is very different from ours, but she'll go, I've been snowed in, so we can't go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Like last winter, we had, uh, we actually had the drive to Comox because uh, we were doing some, we were going, I guess we were going to the, to the Costco there. And uh, we had to, uh, you know, the, uh, actually drive through some snow. <laughs> And, you know, the, the locals were all just kind of like, oh, no, you don't want to go drive, <laughs> drive through that. And it's like, yeah. well, that's, that, you know, uh, from Calgary, that's actually nothing, so we're going to go drive through it. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. How much is some <laughs> snow, you know, is it? Yeah. Uh, um, floods are the bigger problem there. I, I've um, never seen that, but, of course, you know, it's in Victoria itself, it's pretty mountainous. And Mom's yeah. on a lakeside, but... I've never, even though I've only seen rain, I've never hit it. No, we, we've been out there when there's been floods and uh, roads were closed because they got washed out and whatnot. So, uh, uh, you know, with that steady rain, if it comes down heavy, they can have a problem with that. I believe it. So that's your Christmas. And now we're going to jump back to your book. Oh, okay. Or because that's how I roll. Because when I think of things, I have to do it then or I will forget about it. You bet. I already know that you've got a sequel coming out. So if this is, in effect, book one and two as one, will the sequel be a three and four or is it just going to be a book? Oh, actually, the, the, the sequel is written. Um, should, should I give it the title? Sure. Uh, it's a Connecticut, a Connecticut Gumshoe and Sherwood Forest. Well, you uh, meet... It, because you, because you talk about the Loxley boy is one of your, yeah. so. Okay, so we're we're going to give something away here. Uh, so, in King Arthur Court, um, there's uh, some Robin Hood characters as children. Uh, they're there as fourteen year olds, uh -huh. and of course, uh, book two is another six years later. So they'll and be in their twenties. So now they're you know twenty twenty one. And uh, the the whole story there takes place in uh, in Sherwood Forest. Uh, it is also a mashup uh, <laughs> with with the Big Sleep. Ah, uh, so are you just going to do one for every? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, actually, I'm making notes for a third book, which is Casablanca. Of course. Uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> again, uh, Humphrey Bogart is. Uh, Sam Sparrow's <coughs> idol, yes. and so uh, so I'm looking at all of these Humphrey Bogart uh, classics. As, uh, 
So in and theory, so you could have lines to play out. Yeah. You could have dozens of books just based on Humphrey Bogart yeah. movies. Uh, but for book two, I've really intermingled the Robin Hood story with the uh, with the Big Sleep story, uh, rather than the first book where uh, there's a little bit of separation. I mean, you totally drop the uh, the Maltese Falcon in the second half of the book. Yeah. Uh, so this one's structured where it's more evenly woven from beginning to end. Um, and, and I find it kind of fun doing that, you know, trying to figure out uh, uh, which which um, past archetype is going to be the mod the storybook character from the Bogart film, and uh, see how I can make them the same or different depending on, on how the story is going to go. So is there going to be like a British version of the African Queen then? And <laughs> well, I haven't gotten that far ahead yet. Um, <laughs> um, uh, of course, you know, the, the Maltese Falcon, the, mm -hmm. the Big Sleep, and Casablanca are the huge top three bill Bogart films. Yes. Um, see, Sierra Madre might come before African Queen as far as Bogart respectability. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I actually preferred the, I, I really enjoyed both those films. I mean, the African Queen was great. Audrey Hepburn was fantastic. Yeah, but what isn't she fantastic in? Well, she stole the show. In fact, in, in the Connecticut Gumshoe, Sam Sparrow actually admits it. Yeah. <laughs> as, as much as he loves Humphrey Bogart, uh, Catherine Hepburn stole, stole the show in, in uh, The African Queen. <laughs> but like I said, I'm a, I'm a Catherine Hepburn fan, so, you know, anything oh, she's, she's great. We don't, fine. We now. have no one like her today. No. I mean, you, there's just no one to take her place. Nope. Well, and both the Hepburn sisters, Audrey Hepburn also is, you know, got that classic appeal too that I yes. don't think, to be honest, I don't know if there is a classic, because then you could go through the classic actresses and I don't know if there is a modern equivalent to a lot of them, to be honest. You know, I cannot think of anyone. Of course, I'm, I'm not a real big... Uh, uh, you know, ho Hollywood uh, star chaser either. I, I I don't actually think about it a lot. I suppose um, that's I, true. But if, I someone, mean, if someone stands out, they stand out. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose that's true. But even if you think of in Casablanca, Ang Ingrid Bergman. 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 Sorry, we only have like the penultimate special edition of the movie. But anyways. <laughs> um, again, you don't, I don't think, maybe it's the way they pushed him in those days or whatnot, but again, you don't have her equivalency either anymore in my mind. Well, as I think about it, uh, though, back when those films were made, a movie had to have a leading man and a leading lady. Yes. That was what they went for. I think today they're looking for just a leading character. A man or a woman, uh, they're not actually looking for both for a film today. Uh, and so maybe that is a game changer. Maybe. It's hard to say because then you'd think the woman would still stand out. Um, <laughs> now, again, my, my mind's just rolling here. Same here. Uh, I don't, I'm not, not up on the big female uh, leads either. When they go for a male lead, they go for a single male. Yes. If they're not going for a male lead, they're looking at three or four women. That's true. To be the stars, really, when you think about it. They're, they're not looking for a single female lead. They're looking mm. for, a, for three or four no, to, yeah. to do the movie. Uh, you know, just when it occurs to me. Well, it, um, I mean, it depends. Like Scarlett Johansson would be the closest I would oh. consider. Love Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, to, to I, I, I love strong women, and she's always yes. played a very strong role. Uh, the same as Wonder Woman, the actress uh, who plays Wonder Woman. Yes. Uh, I, I like... I've only people. seen her as Wonder Woman, so I can't make a comparison for her, to be honest. She was in one other movie I saw. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. 
Um, but she was also a very, very strong, strong, secure uh, woman, the center focus of the movie. Well, IMDb to the rescue. <laughs> uh, no, it's going to fight me. It's bringing up Linda Carter, that's why I... Well, in the day, I liked Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. Back when I was a kid, I thought she was the perfect actress for that role. She was. Gal Gadot is the new one. Right, and, right, right. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be in the new Cleopatra, so that might be okay. Again, another strong woman role. Excellent. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't recognize her as anything I've seen. Well, apparently, she was in Fast and Furious 6. Oh, that's where I saw her, yeah. I don't I remember all, her in it. I loved all the Fast and Furious movies. So did I. Oh, we, they were good. I, I looked forward to them, and when they said there weren't going to be any more, I was upset. <laughs> yeah, but they might do them with the, with the, um, not, with the you know, like Hobbs and Shaw. They might yeah, do it with I the side ones. And I haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw yet. Oh, really? I'm sure I'll love it, but I haven't seen it yet. It's Fast and Furious, or Jason Statham, you know, You've seen a Jason Statham movie, you've seen the, yeah. you know what to expect. And, you know, so yeah. it's a good action popcorn, leave your brain at the door movie, which yeah, sometimes you need. I've never been disappointed with one of his movies. No, never. you know exactly what you're going to get. And so therefore you walk in happy and walk out getting exactly what you wanted. Yep. Plus on a female side, he's not exactly hard on the eyes, but. No, no, he's not. Um. Uh, <laughs> Also, uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne but, Johnson is also easy on the eyes. And again... Oh, well, no, no, I'm saying I love his movies. Not <laughs> <laughs> but you, again, with Dwayne Johnson, nine times out of ten, you know what you're going to get. Oh, yeah. Also, so you walk in expecting and you walk out happy. Occasionally, yeah. he does something slightly different, but it's still, yeah. Although I've never watched his TV show Ballers. No, I haven't watched that either. The premise didn't really interest me. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, but the movies, uh, I just like him as an actor. You know, I, he, uh, he in the movies, he's always got a nice, a good role that I like. Uh, the TV show, again, uh, there's too many other shows to watch. <laughs> exactly. So, pretty low on my list. Um, so, you know, there's so much out there, you got to be picky, right? Yes. No, I agree. And we watch so little TV ourselves that we watch an hour a night. Well, maybe an hour and a half because we'll watch a half hour sh yeah. show but with dinner. Yeah. But we watch an hour so, a night. Yeah, so if ours isn't making my radar, it should not make yours. <laughs> mm -mm. No, we watch an hour a night except Saturdays and then we'll rent a movie or watch an old movie. Well, we watch TV during meals. We d we do, but we watch like a half hour show, or or we'll watch, um, you know, like Stephen Colbert. Yeah. We'll watch we'll watch his monologue and stuff. We almost never see watch the guests, but we'll watch the monologue and stuff with TV or with dinner, <laughs> and then when we when we're ready to actually watch TV, we'll watch a one hour show. Right now, we're watching Dark on Netflix, but um. Is it good? It is very good. We we've just finished season one, and there's three seasons on there. It's I'll put it on my list for BC. Yeah, if people liken it to Lost, and I only watched the first three seasons of Lost because then I just got bored with it. And but I don't know if I would. It it's an import. It's German, but it's um, it, it's dubbed. That's but, okay. We watch those on Amazon as well. Yeah. Uh, right now we're watching an Australian show on Amazon. So Australians have some good shows. We watched a Russian one called um, Better Than Us that we really enjoyed. Also, um, yes, we watched that. Yeah, yeah. We, we quite enjoyed that. Yeah. We actually went out because the bad guy had these special glasses he would drink his scotch out of, his whiskey out of. So yep. John and I went out and bought those glasses <laughs> for our scotch. Uh, I just wish they had given it a better title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it flew. It, I, th I bet you it flew under the radar. 
Well, that. we don't know what the title was in Russian. It might have actually That's worked true. better. But better than, better than us for the English speaking culture, I thought was a mislabel. You know, yeah. It didn't really hit what, what the series was about. No. It didn't, it didn't grab your attention. No. Yeah. But we quite enjoyed it a lot. It, you know, the, the sci fi, the robot, the, yeah, the robots. Um, what nine times out of ten we lean towards those i mean queen's gambit john's is big into chess so but it was really good anyways um uh so but but yeah but it takes us months to go through a show because well a few weeks they're they're usually 10 to 13 episodes a yeah. season and if you watch one a night for six nights a week it takes a while Yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, we we tend to watch most evenings now because we're not going out anywhere in the evening. So we will actually get a good uh, four or five hours in, wow. in the evening. So, yeah. So Mine the, the, too. The, On the other hand, we get up a lot earlier, so we're in bed a lot earlier. So. Yeah. The uh, Australian show we're watching right now has like 30 episodes per season. What is it called? It's called Water Rats. It's Water the, Rats? Sydney Harbor Police. Oh, okay. Cool. And uh, seven seasons of like 30, 30 episodes each. Wow. <laughs> we like a lot of the Australian shows. Right now, uh, we, we finished watching Monkey, which is, you know, Legend of the Monkey God, basically. Yeah. There's two or three seasons of that, and that was good. And then they did that um, Norse God TV series where they were oh, all yeah. reincarnated. That was New Zealand, though. That wasn't Australia. Oh, see. Okay, North now I just Zealand. insulted a lot of people. Yeah, we have, come on. <laughs> we, have a, we have authors both from New Zealand and Australia, so yeah. now I've just made them both mad. <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, we're talking about the same show. It's actually in New Zealand. Oh, okay. Somehow I it's, it uh, it's a, a, a Norwegian descendants living in New Zealand, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And they're and they're all reincarnations of the gods basically. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's New Zealand, but it's been a couple of years, so maybe I got it wrong. Uh, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. No. <laughs> um well believe it or not, we've been at this almost forty minutes now. Oh my gosh. Well, we have not caught up in a long time either though. So. That's true. We have not seen each other for well, you were supposed to come out in the spring and then a pandemic hit and then a <laughs> pandemic hit yeah actually we've yeah, seen were, each other a lot less since we moved yeah. to airdrie we were we were scheduled to come out there when we got back from bc uh yeah. in march right but uh, we were we were home for like five days <laughs> when the pandemic was announced <laughs> i know i know so and we have a bunch of game new games obviously so although we haven't been buying them like we used to because well we haven't been playing them right but, but we do have a few new games that you haven't seen well when this thing ends we will have to be out there yes yes play some wingspan or something like that we we'll always look forward to trying a new game <laughs> well we played, um, you played the one that took place in um, Water Deep, right? Um, based on House on Haunted Hill, it was. Um, oh, yeah, 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 we played that one. So yeah. you played that one, yeah. That might have been the last one we played in your house. I think so. Um, so, so, yeah, I think Wingspan's our newest one, maybe? Which Cliff has played, but I don't think you guys have. So no, we haven't played Wingspan. No, it's birds. Okay. Birds. <laughs> it sounds more fun than it. I mean, it is more fun than it sounds when you say birds. But well, that's really not much of a hint. <laughs> that's not. Good. That's not what the game You're is. You're collecting so. birds. You're literally collecting birds. In this oh, game. shoot. Yeah. What was that game? From when I was a kid, that had uh, the works of art in it. Works of art. 
Yeah, Picasso's and whatnot. You were collecting those. I honestly don't know. I don't think I played that. Masterpiece, it might have been called. Oh, maybe. It was a board game. And that was like one of the most popular board games there was. And you were, you were collecting works of art. So collecting birds might be the same idea. Um, maybe. It's fun. Oh, and we got the re remaster in the 80s. Um, there was the Dune board game, which we have. We have the original, but they, they re-released the new version of it. So we, we got that, of course. Um, yeah, so we have lots of gaming to catch up on. Sweet. So anyways, Connecticut Gum Shoe in King Arthur's Court. Get it now, because it'll be available when this comes out. Uh, I think pre-order is available now. Yes, but this will be out after pre-orders. Oh, that's it'll, true. Yes. This that's will sorry. be out. Yeah, You're giving away the magic of <laughs> interviews. No, I forgot we were time traveling. I did. We're time traveling. <laughs> I'm thinking of putting this out around the Christmas time. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, and it'll be out by then. And you'll have had your, um, your launch by then because your book launch is happening. Yeah. Uh, the afternoon of December 15th on Facebook. Yes. Yes, we've done a few Facebook launches. They're fun. Yeah, I've attended a few. And we will, um, we will then, I guess, say goodbye. Not goodbye until we meet again. Until we meet again. Adieu. We will definitely talk anyways, you and I yeah. personally. Um, and we will... At the Facebook event, maybe the, tell people this is coming out too. Sure. Yep. But it'll be mentioned in the newsletter when it comes out too. Nice. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Good talking with you too again, Randy. Yeah, good actually seeing you face to face has been great. <laughs> we haven't done that for a while. The one I, haven't done, <laughs> I haven't done that for a while with a lot of people. So what are you going to do? Well, again, Connecticut Gumshoe in King Arthur's Court. It's right here behind me in triplicate. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Buy it. It's great. Thanks again, Randy. Okay. We'll see you. See Have you. Have a good day. Bye.